Okay, welcome to this master's uh, presentation. Um, I, I was going to present your name, but I, I have only ever called you Sia. <laughs> um, so I won't, I won't try to pronounce your full name, Sia. But Sia has been working on a master's thesis for the last, um, last eight or nine months now. And she's been working mainly using the data and working directly with me. But there's also a sort of practical question here because we're interested in measuring the player style of Hammerby. Um, but her, her title is Measuring Style of Play in Football Using Statistics and Machine Learning. And I'll now hand over to you, Sia, to give your presentation. Hi, everyone. Um, I think you need to. Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Sia, and uh, this is my presentation. And um, sorry, okay. So, my presentation will have uh, the following four parts. Firstly, I will introduce the purpose and aim of this project. Then I will talk about how I process the data. Then I will show you some uh, experiments and the result that I get. And in the end, I will discuss the conclusion and some future work that uh, we're gonna do. So uh, normally when we talk about football data analysis, these three uh, aspects are those that come up in my mind. Um, we want to analyze the performance of a team uh, in a single match. We want to analyze the performance of a team in a longer term. And also we try, we, we want to predict what tactic um, a team should use in the following games. So what we focus on in our project is the attempted goals. In other words, is the attacking strategy. And to fulfill these three aspects, here are some questions that I have. Uh, what variables should be defined as uh, reference indicators for the attacking style of a team? How do these variables relate to the outcome of a shot? How to measure the uniqueness of the style of a team? Can attacking style be considered as a characteristic of football teams? And how to classify football teams according to these characteristics that we defined? So in this picture, um, this picture shows the structure of the data set that I have. Um, here, the important part are the chains and the events. So a chain consists of several continuous events, and it will restart when the team loses the possession of the ball for over two continuous events. So these are the, uh, yeah, this is the information that uh, an event would have. Like for example, the time, the location, and some qualifiers that, that is defined by the people who collect the data. So in this picture, uh, these are some goal chains uh, in one match. Goal chains means that uh, the chain consists of several events and will end up with the goal in the end. So in our data set, the attack, the, uh, the attack direction is always from left side to the right side. That's why all the goals are concentrated on the right side of the pitch. And these are the ones that we want to analyze in this project. Yeah, however, the number of these uh, goal chains is very limited. Even we uh, consider all the matches in the past three years in Osmanskan. That's why we extend the concept of goal chains to uh, expected goal chains. So we introduce an expected goal model uh, where we measure the probability of a shot to become a goal um, from zero to one. And we take all the expected goal chains uh, with the shot that uh, the expected goal value is over 0 0.05. Then for all these uh, expected goal chains, we defined these following uh, variables. The first one is the directness of the chain, which means the ball travel net length, the red line, divided by the ball travel actual distance, the green line here. And also we calculate the time and the pass number uh, a chain would have in first, middle, and final section of the pitch. Also, we collect, uh, we collect the involved player number in the chain and the starting point location of the chain. Here, uh, we uh, classify all the expected goal chains into two types. The first type is called, uh, we start with the ball. Those are the chains that has these starting events in it. And the rest, we call them, uh, we regain the ball. 
So during this process of getting all these variables, there are some obstacles that I had. The first one is that um, the chains are not stopped by some special cases. For example, when someone gets injured or the ball is all of the pitch, when these kind of things happens, the time is still ticking and uh, those information would not be shown uh, in our data set. Another thing is that the chains are not restarted by these starting events that we defined. So that's why for the chains uh, belongs to, we start with the ball, I redefine them like uh, I redefine these chains start with these starting events because I think it makes more sense. Uh, yeah, and there's another thing is that uh, this data is half manually collected. So there are some irregular uh, samples in our data that needs to be filtered out. Okay, so after the process of the data, I did the first experiment on comparing the mean values of the variables. The first way uh, of comparing it is like this, in this picture. This is an example of comparing the average time of the expected goal chains. And so here we collect uh, all the values for 16 teams uh, in the past three years, uh, and uh, we rank them in order. And the mean, uh, and, and the middle line here shows the mean value for all the teams in that year. Uh, so the green bars in every picture shows the value for Team Hammerby. The red bars here uh, shows the value that is within the 95% confidence interval of the value of Hammerby. And the blue bars are the ones uh, that is outside this interval. The next method that I use is to directly compare the, uh, to show the development of some variables. We can pick several teams like in this example, I picked the top five teams in 2019 in Auschwitz and compare their, uh, the development of their past number for the past three years. Here are more examples. I compare the directness and the player number for these five teams. There's another method that I use is specifically for the starting point location for all these chains. Here, I only put the, uh, the chains that belongs to the we regain the ball type. And uh, here's the result. These blue dots on the pitch shows the regaining point of Team Hammerby, where in the end they make a quality shot. And the, the number here shows the distribution of all these um, regaining points on the whole pitch in the three sections. Okay, so I think with these three uh, ways, of comparing the mean value, we can provide the football team a uh, reference to compare with the strategy that they designed uh, in the beginning, and they can adjust their future training plan, uh, taking this as a um, reference. The second experiment that I did is to compare the distribution of uh, all the variables. The method that I use is the KS test where the null hypothesis is that the two observed data share a specific, uh, the specific same distribution. The test statistics uh, that I take here is the maximum, uh, the maximum difference between the two empirical uh, cumulative function of the two data sets. And if we set the significance level as 95%, then these are some examples. In these two pictures, the p-value is uh, over 0.05. So we consider these two distribution as the same distribution. And in these two pictures, the p-value is smaller than 0.05. So these two distributions are completely not the same. And if we consider Hammerby as the center of our analysis, then we can compare Hammerby with all the other teams, uh, with all these variables, and then get the p-value. And here's the result. In these three pictures, uh, these are all the p-values that we get for different variables, comparing Hammerby with all the different teams. And the colored grids uh, are the ones that the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05. And the darker the color is, um, the, uh, the smaller the p-value would be than the more different, the, uh, than the more different those two distribution would be in this grid. And so comparing these three pictures together from year 2017 to 2019, we can tell that although uh, 
the attacking style for Team Hammer is becoming more and more unique compared to all the teams in Osman Scan. But for most teams in most variables, they are having the exact same distribution. So that means that KS test cannot capture a specific characteristic uh, for Team Hammerby when it comes to the attacking style. Actually, if I put other teams as the center of this analysis, the result will be quite similar. Okay, then I tried to get the correlations of all the variables that I defined in the beginning. And here's the result. The red color shows the positively related ones. The blue color shows the negatively related ones. The interesting thing in this picture is that the expected goal value, which shows the quality of a shot, is not strongly related to any other variables that we defined. So this means that the quality of the shot might not relate to any attacking style. And the rest uh, of the variables, how they relate to each other, I think it's uh, following the actual situation. For example, the time in three sections is uh, strongly positively related to the past number in these three sections. So to explore more about the uniqueness of the attacking style of a team, and then to try to classify the teams according to that, the first method that I use is the principal component analysis. Um, here, I delete some of the variables since in this picture, we have already seen that time and past number, the information they provide is quite overlapping with each other. And so this picture shows the coefficient of the first and second principal component with all the other variables. And this picture shows the cumulative variance of the first four principal component in this experiment. So the first two principal component cover over 80% um, of the total difference in our data set. So we can uh, create a two dimension plane with these two principal components and then project all the samples on this plane and see how they, how they distribute. And this is the result. And in this picture, we see the, uh, all the samples for Team Hammerby in 2019. And we can see that these uh, uh, yeah, we can see that these dots are widely spread uh, on this whole plan. It's not concentrating in a certain area. So this might show that um, the attacking style for Team Hammerby uh, is not a characteristic. And if, if we take all the top five teams in 2019 Oswanskan, the other four teams are uh, sharing the same situation uh, with Hammerby that they're, uh, how, how their samples are distributed on this plan. And also where their points are located for these five teams is quite similar. There's like no spe specific area for a certain team. So that means that their attacking style is also quite similar to each other. So to dig more about this topic, another method that I use is the k-nearest neighbor algorithm. The idea is that the model will learn a, a ideal a radius of this circle, and then we can decide the test sample which which type it belongs to uh, with this uh, with the radius of this circle. So in this example, if we set the radius as three, then the test sample should belong to the red square. But if we set the radius as six, then this test sample should belong to the round circle, uh, the blue circle. In our data, um, every uh, yeah uh, every expected goal change is a sample, and all the variables are the features. Then we can calculate the uh, the actual distance between all the samples with this function. Um, and if we take um, the training and the testing uh, data uh, proportion to seven to three, then we can. Uh, measure the quality of the classification with the F score that is defined here. Uh, and we consider that if uh, for a team, the higher the F score it gets, um, the more unique it would be in the attacking style. And here's the result that we get. Here's the precision, the recall, and F score. So the red line here shows the random classification accuracy uh, for the 16 teams. 
So with this baseline, we can tell that this classification result is uh, not satisfactory. Uh, so this means that although there exists some small, small difference between the uniqueness of teams in their attacking style, but the difference is not big enough for our model to capture it. And actually, if I, uh, I actually tried to use this function to, cap, uh, to calculate the average distance between different teams, then the, all the values that I get is quite close to each other. So this uh, shows again that their attacking style is quite similar to each other. Also, I take only Team Hammerby for the past three years and do the comparison. And here's the F score that I get. So considering that uh, the random classification accuracy should be 0 0.33 in this test, then the result is also not that good. So it means that the attacking style for Hammerby in the past three years doesn't have a very obvious difference. Then another question that I, uh, I was considering is that is there any other characteristics in the playing style that we can uh, explore more about? So the idea that I come up with is here, the past pattern. So these three pictures shows the past pattern of Hammerby in the past three years. Uh, the past pattern is that we collect all the, uh, yeah, we show the how all the passes in one year for a team is distributed on the whole pitch. So in this uh, test, we uh, for every team, we evenly separate all the uh, all the passes into ten subsets, and then we plot a twenty times twenty histogram uh, to show where all these. Uh, passes are located on the pitch. So we have 400 features for one picture. Then for every team, we have 10 samples with uh, 400 features each. Then the classification result shows like this. Here with the baseline here, uh, we can tell that this result is much better than uh, the one in experiment five. And uh, uh, here team, uh, team Gothenburg has the most unique pass pattern while Team Hammerby has the least unique pass pattern. Yeah, so, so in this picture, I'm thinking that maybe, uh, maybe this helps Hammerby to get a pretty good performance in 2019, since that their pass pattern is quite unpredictable for their opponents and other players. Also, if I take Team Hammerby for the past three years and do this test, the F score, we can tell is really, really good. Actually, by just observing these three pictures, we can already see the huge change in their past pattern for the past three years. So Kenyer's neighbor algorithm can be considered as a method to measure the change of past pattern for team. Okay, so with all these experiments, I think I answered these questions that I came up in the beginning. Our conclusion is that attacking style cannot be considered as a characteristic for football teams. And all the attacking style for teams in Auschwitzgang is quite similar to each other. And also there exists some other characteristics for playing style for us to discover in the future. So uh, in the future, one idea to make this uh, experiment better is to using the tracking data since the tracking data has more information uh, about what's happening on the uh, in one match compared to the data that I'm using now. And also there's an ongoing project um, that uh, we are doing now is to using the neural network to predict the result or the quality of a shot according to some previous events. And here's the some result that I get so far. Here, I take all the shots in the past three years in Auschwitzgang, almost 20,000 samples. And then for every event, I take 42 features from the qualifiers. The time step we choose here is how many events we want to put in the model for the model to learn about the outcome. And the, the output here is only if it's a, if it's a goal or a not goal. And uh, in, and yeah, and these two pictures shows the ROC curve and the precision recall curve. The light green color here is the ideal curve. So it means that although uh, with the increase of the event that we put in this model, uh, the result is getting better, the performance is better. But um, 
it's not that good enough. I'm thinking that there might be two explanations. It might be that my model that I'm using here is still not good enough for the prediction. Or it might be that the result of the shot is not that easy to predict only with these uh, uh, features that we choose. So in the future, what we're planning to do is firstly try to use different combinations of features so we can see what is more important for the outcome of a shot. And also we are gonna to try to do some regression with this model use, uh, by the help of the expected goal value. Yeah, that's all of my presentation and thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I wonder if I can be heard on this. Uh, maybe I don't... switch off your microphone. Yes, sorry. Yeah, no. Um, thank um, you very, very much, much Sia. Yeah. What we'll do now is we'll, we will open up for questions for those who are in the Zoom. And I should make you aware that this, this is actually also being broadcast on YouTube. So be careful uh, with your questions that um, I'm sure nobody's going to say anything controversial, but I just want to make everyone aware, aware of that fact before they, before they ask a question. Do I have any questions? Stefan, you've put your camera on. Have you got a question? Yes, I do. Uh, I was wondering if there are uh, any alternatives to the um, principal component analysis that you showed. Uh, you showed um, some... Uh, um, in, in a XY plane, basically, some principal components dotted. And you said that um, there aren't so big differences between, uh, between these, right? So you have green to the, to the right, Hama B 2019, and then you have a couple of others to the left. And I can agree that according to the eyeball norm, they seem to be um, roughly the same. But could this be made sharper somehow? And are there alternatives to PCA here? I think you need to unmute your yes. uh, microphone. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure about what other things I can do on this test because um, But I mean, they, they, they look similar, right? But yes. previously you made this KS uh, test, yes. uh, which was one dimensional. Mm. So I was wondering if, if you could sharpen instead of just eyeball norm, is there any good way of uh, getting a statistical answer to whether these two are the same or not the same or? Yeah, maybe I can get like a average value for all these, uh, like the coordinates of all these points. Uh, on this uh, on this plane and see like if there's difference between them. But doesn't experiment five start to answer that question? Experiment five, yes, because uh, experiment five is like a, a more con like a confirm of the conclusion that I got here mm -hmm. that there's no big difference between all these attacking styles. So this is like a are just providing me an idea that the attacking style is quite similar to each other. That's what I think. But yes, there's, um, I mean, if we only look at this experiment, maybe there is definitely more, uh, uh, some more stuff to uh, like to explore. But if we have the experiment five, then I think we have already proved this point in another way. So we don't need to dig more in this point anymore. But you could do PCA on the pitch on, you could do the PCA on experiment six, for example. Uh, yes, definitely. Works. Yeah, 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 yeah. That might be possible that I do PCA on uh, the experiment six and then see if this result and that result would be quite different or not. Yeah. Good other. Are there other um, questions? I have quite a few questions. I mean, the, if I start with one of the basic ones, we were thinking a lot when we started this project, we were thinking about Hammerby and there was a lot of very strong claims by the people in the coaching staff in Hammerby and the technical director that we had a very unique way of playing football and I think everyone who's there would still agree that we have a unique way of playing football over the last two years. But you 
um, first, are there any signs from what you found of that unique way of playing football? And then secondly, where there aren't signs of it, why do you think there uh, there's a limitation? Um, the thing is that if I if, if I if we look at this picture, wait, sorry, if we look at if we look at this picture, like in year two thousand nineteen, there are actually some teams that is quite completely different with Hamby, but uh, for most teams is quite similar. I think it's like um, for it's it's like for me it's like it's an on average thing or not on average, because what we are considering is on average, we collect all the data for all the attackings and then see if there's any difference. But if we maybe if we only consider like one player or one uh, under a certain kind of condition, how they play, then there might be a specific style. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, if we consider every condition together, I think it's more like in my experiment, the result shows that there's no optimal way of attack. Uh, there's no like a specific way you should attack under whatever condition. It's definitely like under different conditions, you need to use different styles. It's just that there, there's definitely a specific mindset in their head, that we should do this or that. But what actually come out um, is, in total, if we see them as a whole, that is quite similar to each other. That's what I think. And then one thing you haven't mentioned, which I know because I've read the project, but um, the, one of the things that inspired experiment six was there was a, uh, I think a master's thesis from Harvard, which was um, quite influential, which claimed you could very much distinguish playing of La Liga teams and you got a you got some distinction but a much weaker distinction can you comment on why why um, you got that difference or if you what explanation you have of that I think my explanation is uh, probably um, because the difference between like two leagues maybe I, I did not uh, I I don't have the data for their league so I cannot do ex exactly the same experiment but I think that I, I saw his result and um, it's like for some teams, the result is pretty good. It's like 100% accuracy to classify. So I'm thinking in that case, those teams definitely have a very, very special, uh, like their, it's like their own uh, signature of their playing pattern. It's like this experiment I have for only Hammerby for the past three years like here the precision can also be like 100 mm. percent so that means that there must be something that's very special for them but maybe for us it's not that different maybe that's why i think that i want to clarify that result for hammerby fans because i think that's very interesting that one basically says that in 2017 before the current manager took over you could always tell their playing style with 100 percent reliability um how they were playing. So they were playing a very different style of football then in that year. Yeah. Are there any, any other questions? Please feel free to ask any, any question of... Uh, um, are there, there's some questions on the YouTube thing. So um, yeah, um, there's a question here. Did you did you calculate performance linked to style? I think you have answered that question, but maybe you could answer it again so that uh, um, the they can. Linked to style. Yeah. So um, the performance, as in scoring more goals and so on, how well you perform and how that links to the style of play. Yeah. So so here, as I said uh, earlier, I don't think there's an optimal solution for. Uh, attacking style. It's like there's no optimal uh, result. It's like, um, for example, in this picture, we can tell that the rank of this stuff is not actually strongly related to the rank of the performance of the teams uh, in that year. And also here, we have already seen that the result of a shot um, is not related or strongly related to any of these variables. So this means that 
um, these attacking styles that we defined do not influence the result of the shot. It might influence like how many more chances that we created uh, in a match, but it doesn't influence the result of the shot. Yeah. Okay. Three, one. Um, no, 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 I haven't. I haven't considered that. Maybe that's more variables or features to put in in the future. We have to consider. Uh This is another interesting thing because in this picture we have already seen that the first and second principal component is not like strongly related to any of single one of these variables. It's like, especially for the first one, it's either is positive or sorry, either is positively or neg negatively related to of like every one of them in a quite like evenly way like the number here, if I can put it in there. It's uh, quite similar, to, the number is quite similar to each other. So I think there's no uh, specific meaning for the first or second principal component uh, to like, if we can, in, there's no specific interpretation of us. Mm. I, I, I don't I think, think there is, because I think, I think if you look, the blue ones are negatively correlated. Well, and the red ones are positively correlated, and they're also related to your expected goals thing, where you look at the correlations yes, between expected goals. Yes, but for me, that's like a quite, um, I would say, quite obvious. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what you get out of a principal component analysis. Something right. quite obvious. I mean, the first one is directness. Yeah. Um, if it's more, it's or it's lack of directness, mm. you could say. Then the second one is something else <laughs> that's less the second one's less easy to interpret mm. um good last chance if anyone has got any questions at all thank you very much for the questions on on youtube they're very uh, very useful any more questions good then we will Thanks, Sia, with our reaction clap thing here. And uh, I'm the only person in the room, so I'll give her an applause. And thanks for a very good presentation. And uh, thanks for you 